We did nothing wrong! Yeah, we did. We were supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. Final authority. Okay. Now, Augustine, of course, never said anything like that, uh, but Augustine could not read Hebrew. And the Bible of the early church, there is no question about this, the Bible of the early church was the Greek Septuagint. There is no, there is, again, Anderson has already said, well, we don't say that kind of stuff. Well, he says he claims to. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. He even says he's reading the Greek Septuagint. And again, I'm, I'm highly skeptical. But be it as it may, if he is, then he has no excuse for the, the ignorance that he's demonstrating. And so Brother White's whole hypothesis, based on the letter of Aristeus, which is the structure and foundation, supposedly, for this whole fictional story, resulting in what is called the Septuagint, utterly collapses based on his own statements. Because aside from the fact that the LXX in and of itself is a fictional title, aside from the fact that LXX equals 72 simply don't be mathin, and aside from the fact that numerous scholars, such as Sir Branton, Dr. Philip Comfort, which we mentioned in a previous video, associate the story as a fairy tale. And aside from the fact that one would be hard pressed to find six Jewish scholars or scribes out of each of the 12 tribes in any one geographical area during the second century BC or the third century BC. And aside from the fact that the Hakohen Hagadol, the high priest, would not appoint six scribes from each of the 12 tribes to do any work of transmitting or copying. And aside from the fact that the high priest would exclusively appoint scribes from one tribe, the tribe of Levi, because the high priest knows perfectly well that the custodial duties of the Torah and transmitting and translating the Torah those duties belong to the tribe of Levi. And aside from the fact that the Greek language and culture was abominable during this time period due to the acts of the Greeks overwhelming the Jewish community and populations and enforcing Hellenism upon them, and aside from the fact that the letter of Aristeus uses cherry-picked common Jewish names and associates those names with, with fictional characters and fictional translators. Let's just hypothetically, aside of all of those things we just mentioned, let's hypothetically assume for one moment that the story of the letter of Aristeus is true. And again, this is the whole foundation for the document known as the LXX or the Septuagint. Let's just assume and suppose for one moment, we will give Dr. White that hypothetical for a moment. Let's assume that the letter of Aristeus is true. Well, the letter of Aristeus itself clearly tells us in scores of places, chapter 2, verse 5, chapter 2, verse 7, chapter 2, verse 20, chapter 2, verse 33, chapter 2, verse 35, that only the Pentateuch, exclusively the Pentateuch, the law of the Jews, their law, this law, the holy law, is all a reference, check the references yourself, to the first five books of Moses. And so this eliminates all of the rest of Scripture during that time period. That means that what the letter of Aristeus suggests is that only the Torah, first five books of Moses, were in fact translated into Greek. You know what that does? That eliminates all of the Navim, the prophets, all of the Ketuvim, the writings. And so, assuming and giving 
Dr. White that hypothetical, that means that all of those passages that Yeshua and his apostles quote that are not from the first five books, and we've listed some, we'll go over them in a minute, in a minute. That means that all of those passages that Yeshua and his apostles quote that were not in the first five books of Moses could not possibly have been quoted or cited from the Greek Septuagint. It's impossible. Matthew chapter 2, when Matthew is writing and he talks about the Jewish leaders mentioning that the Messiah will be born in Beit Lechem. And he is citing Micah chapter 5. He couldn't possibly have been citing the LXX. In Matthew chapter 15, when Jesus is uh, talking about how to the Jewish leaders, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, when he's telling them, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draws nigh to me with their mouth and with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He is citing Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 29. But he couldn't have been citing from the LXX or Septuagint. Why? Because the prophets were not a part of what was translated according to the letter of Aristeus. In Matthew chapter 24, when Yeshua cites Daniel the prophet and the abomination of desolation and the contents of Daniel 8 to 9, when Jesus is citing or quoting from Daniel, he couldn't have been citing or quoting from the LXX or Septuagint if we accept this hypothetical that the letter of Aristeus is true. And the same thing is true with Paul in Romans chapter 1, when Paul cites or quotes Habakkuk chapter 2, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul could not possibly have been quoting from the Septuagint. In Romans chapter 3, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Paul is making a citation out of Psalm chapter 14, which is a part of the Ketuvim, a part of the writings. But he couldn't have been quoting the Septuagint because the writings were not a part of the translation. Romans chapter 9, the same thing. Paul is citing or quoting Isaiah chapter 29 when he talks about the potter having power over one vessel or another. The same thing is true with Mark chapter 13. When Mark writes and inscribes what Jesus talks about, the abomination of desolation, in Daniel chapter 8 to chapter 9. Yeshua could not possibly have been talking about or quoting from a Septuagint, because the Septuagint is only a translation of the Pentateuch, according to the letter of Aristeus, according to their foundational document itself. Luke chapter 24, when Jesus expounds to his disciples after his resurrection out of the Torah, the Navim, and the Ketuvim. The law, <clears throat> the prophets, and the writings. Well, every time he expounded to his disciples out of the prophets and the writings, he couldn't have been expounding out of a Greek Septuagint. It simply could not be possible. And so you see, based on the document itself that the proponents of the Septuagint rely upon, Dr. White's statement is simply not conceivable. It could not have been possible based on his own statements about what he believes about Yeshua and his apostles quoting from a Septuagint. Because, again, not the whole Tanakh, or what is referred to by Gentiles as the Old Testament, was translated into Greek. And so there's scores of other places where you have citations and quotations out of the prophets and out of the writings. All of the times that Isaiah is quoted by Yeshua's apostles. All the times that Ezekiel is quoted, Jeremiah is quoted. 
all of the times that any of the other prophets are quoted. All of the time that any of the writings are quoted, in particular the Psalms, could not have possibly been cited from a Greek Septuagint. It simply could not be so. And have a blessed day.